Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at how we decide which transport system to use. So let's dive right into it. Now, what the heck is this transport system? It's a basically group travel system. Basically, it's not meant for one person, person A to person B. It's meant for large groups of people, minimum of 50 or 60. Now, it has a schedule. Basically, it does not run when you want it. It runs when it wants it. So it has a schedule and there is a fee for a trip. So you don't have any capital investment for using this. You simply go use it and pay the fee. Now, the routes of this method, it's like how, where you're gonna go from point A to point B, it's gonna be predetermined. Basically, it's gonna be established route. So like this is a uh, Delhi Metro network map. This is a airlines network map. So you can get the idea, like it's all predetermined. Like you can't go from here to here. Like it's not on your whim, it's predetermined. So this is what it is. Then question becomes, why the heck do we want it? Now, first answer, physics. Now, what does that physics mean? It simply means that we don't have enough space. Like, as you can see, this is a 10 lane road. How many cars it can carry? Now, car number of cars are high, but number of people is very low because you may have a scenario where per car there is only one person. That's not enough of people. Now, a big town has a lot of people, millions of people. So in that sort of scenario, this is a image that is going around in internet. You can uh, search for this kind of image by typing uh, cars, bus, versus cycle so as you can see like how many cars needed to just carry this amount of people like very few 40 people equals 40 car like a bus one bus you need to carry that much cycle of course you need a bit more but uh, more or less the same thing so this is the idea like we don't have infinite surface area on this earth earth has a limited surface area your uh, cities has to be uh, like uh, you know congested enough like you can't have a scenario where like the roads between the buildings can be like you know 10 like this wide it's just not gonna happen so physics is limiting the physical area of us then time like you don't have enough time like where uh, you know this many car is on the road you know each car going into specific a specific b specific c in those sort of scenario everybody is slowing down because you like let's say you are going on a road not all of you are going from point a to point b some are going a some are going b during that time whenever you are uh, debarking from this sort of road or all that it's causing slowdown and we have a limited number uh, like you know amount of hours per day you can't like spend five to six hours per day in traffic itself i mean like many people are forced to do though and it has very severe consequences and on top of that there is cost because i told you that the structure public transport structure works on a fee basis basically every time you use it you pay for it you don't uh, it doesn't matter for you whether you uh, like you are not using it for a month you don't pay you use it for a day you pay for only that day but in terms of cars let's say you have this permanent investment not only you you know spent a large amount of capital money to buy this you have to spend a large amount of money to keep it running also so that's the cost aspect of it and then comes the part of range basically let's say you are driving very far let's say from one city to another city your bus may uh, you know your car and bus both of them have more or less the same range but your bus driver is trained for you know that kind of long journey like five six hours or seven hour journey you're not trained for that and like you can do it you will be just fatigued and tired so range is also an issue and uh, of course like you can't go like you know one state to another state to another state on a car like you can do that you will just ludicrously tired so this is why we have need like physics does not allow everybody to have a car time there is a limited number of hours in a day cost not everybody is rich enough range your car is not going to take you to next country so this is why we have public transport now public transport you have to understand has something what we could classify as reach like where it goes from point a to point b where it goes so give you a basic idea rough idea you have to understand this there is a door to door transport system which we call taxi you don't buy the taxi uh, so you don't have to do capital investment but you only do right sharing uh, either you can do ride sharing to reduce your cost or you can do uh, you know individual ride where it's a bit more expensive but you can get from door to door basically i want to go from this point to that point it does not matter where it's on the map it's door to door so that's taxi number one then second we have what we call st uh, street to street this is more common for buses basically you will be if you are using bus services you will know this road to that road and uh, this halt to that halt basically it's a uh, 
bit more vague than uh, what you call door to door you're not going to drop exactly to uh, you know where you want to go you will be dropped close enough that you can walk so that we classify as street to street then we have block to block this is more uh, common in big cities basically where you have metro system basically metro go, uh, takes you from one big uh, block city block to another city block it's not going to take you from like you know uh, five buildings down the line it's going to take you from here to 50 buildings down the line so this is what we classify as intercity transport basically block to block transport then you have city to city which is a uh, domain of the railway basically this allows you to travel from east uh, you know one big city to another big city however far apart it may be like in case of india like uh, because our trains are a bit slow so we can spend upwards of 36 hours in a train so that is city to city city a to city b we use by uh, basically trains you know dominate that environment then we come to country to country flat out you have only one option aeroplanes you can't use train there are very few uh, like of course in european union you can do that there are many trains that uh, go across countries but uh uh, for rest of the world you have to use airlines so these these are the reach aspect of it that's why you never see people saying like you know oh, bus transport system uh, bus transport system it takes care of all our need no because even though let's say bus can take care of street to street block to street and city to city it can't go from country to country or door to door so these two become out of reach then you talk about uh, other aspects then it becomes clear we need uh, something for each of this level door to door street to street block to block and city to city and then country to country so that's why we have so many transport type that's why there is not like you know one transport to take care of it all then we come to the cost aspect of it this is what i wanted to uh, focus on it's like i've already made lots of video about uh, transport system and uh, all of them have certain aspects of it core aspect is always come down to cost now this is the capital investment that i'm talking about basically overall cost like how much money you're going to spend on top of that uh, if let's say it's based of uh, you know connecting point a to point b how much distance there is between point a and point b let's say you can uh, you're trying to connect two japanese city it's going to be very close compared to trying to connect uh, uh, two cities in america it could be far apart as uh, like you know 3000 kilometers so in those sort of scenario we take closer look at cost per kilometer how much money you have to spend to do this per kilometer on top of that there is a significant amount of manpower to be invested so as you can see these are the pioneers who built a railway line in america they it does take a lot of people lots of people like a railway line is not something that you can just build by 50 people or 60 people airport can be done with a very few amount of people because plane does not need a, you know construction from point a to point b and you can maintain airport on both ends so in those sort of scenario you will find airports are cheaper because you don't have to spend money per kilometer and on top of that then comes the final uh, nail in the coffin so to say taxes and safety so taxes are very very uh, significant part of airline uh, travel and rail travel so that's why if you think uh, airline tickets should be much cheaper because if you have uh, paid attention to your uh, airline ticket many times they specify fuel cost so fuel cost of course the profit cost and all that it's never as much as as you would think like you would think the ticket should be let's say 40 dollars but turns out you're paying 80 dollars why you are paying 80 dollars that's because of taxes there is a lot of taxes and safety safety taxes so you have to understand this cost is not as clear cut as people will think like if you think like okay 50 million dollar is more than good enough how like oh, did you thought of cost per kilometer did you thought of manpower record because this part escalates very quickly and if you have one strike uh, during your construction yeah it's going to derail the project so there is a lot of uh, small moving parts in the cost aspect then we come to the time of let's say you built it you got the thing done how about you build it and maintenance time now building and maintenance time is as you can see like uh, let's say you had a contractor who built the maglev system for you or who built the metro system for you or tram system uh, they're not going to maintain it they're going to give you like okay these are few people you keep it in you know your supply and they're going to replace the system fix the system whenever it goes broke that's completely different and on top of that many times a country cannot afford absolute system from day one so they built it in blocks like you know phase one phase two phase three or many metro systems have that so uh, how much money does it take to upgrade now you have the core infrastructure how much does it take to upgrade either to run more trains either to run trains further basically building more viaducts to uh, connect distant points so what kind of upgrade capability do you have on top of that 
what kind of running cost we are talking about here because a bus has a different running cost you have to pay the basically driver you have to pay for the fuel and then you have to pay for the cost of bus on top of that uh, you have to have a bit of insurance and then is your profit in metro is completely different thing so on top of that you have to figure out running cost from day one because many things are super cheap like let's say uh, airports they are very cheap relatively speaking you just build from point a to point b and you have almost a cross country uh, range basically you can go from uh, america to china if you have airports so that's pretty awesome but running costs are very damn high because pilots are expensive because air traffic controllers are even more expensive so you're getting the idea running cost is something that you have to pay very close attention to now on top of that we have a wear and tear cost this this aspect is neglected but generally comes back to bite you in the ass is because as you can see like nothing lasts forever like you built railway tracks let's say they give you a warranty of 50 years that for 50 years nothing's gonna happen to track okay cool there are tracks that are built that good and last that long but your carriage is gonna wear out the springs gonna wear out the motor is gonna wear out some things will catch on fire things will erode things happen wear and tear itself adds a very significant amount of cost let's say you built a, a metro system on a viaduct that viaduct has a lifespan it's not gonna be like oh we're gonna use it for 300 years it's gonna be intact no it's gonna broke apart in 100 years so uh, wear and tear is a very significant part now this is where good planning will help you bad planning will kill you there has been scenario where a bridges has collapsed but here's the everybody's like that bridge is bad bridge is bad but here's the bridge was built with a specific lifespan every engineer will tell you this bridge with good maintenance should last you 50 to 60 years so once you reach that uh, let's say 45 year you should start building a new bridge you will be done in five years then you demolish this one and you start using the new one People hadn't done that. People just uh, kept uh, using the old one and somebody forgot. Like, of course, 40, 50 years is a long time. Maybe the old engineer is, you know, dead, passed away. So this kind of thing happened where, uh, you know, people were using a bridge as if it were like uh, never fall down and it did fall down. Loss of lives have happened because wear and tear cost is a very significant thing. And generally, this is the most overlooked part. On top of that, we have to uh, worry about insurance policy because there is a lot of human life involved and hundreds of them, you have to have insurance policy. How are you going to take care of uh, accidents? Like, do you have a hospital system nearby or do you have a, in many railways, they have a basically hospital train itself that will go to a affected area and help uh, with medical aids and things of that nature. And sometimes in airlines, you will have insurance policy that if you pay a little bit like a few dollars in your ticket, they will, in case of accident or in case of a loss of product, as in like uh, loss of luggage they will pay you a small amount of fee so that insurance also runs on money it's not free so all things considered even after the core hundred million dollar a few billion dollar uh, cost uh, basically core cost in uh, investment you still need to worry about building and maintenance time on top of that how tolerant it is your system now i what i mean by tolerance basically let's say something bad happened let's say hurricane tsunami something bad happened how long does it take for your system to recover because be mindful this is not uh, where we are talking about okay people a, a one person cannot go from place a to place b this is like affecting a very large amount of people a train ca can easily carry to 700 to 1000 people a plane can easily carry 500 people and they might be able carrying uh, airport might be carrying let's say 50 to 60 uh, aircrafts per day so how long does it take to recover let's say some bad incident happened be it weather based be it man-made something bad happened how long does it take to recover this is very crucial part so if you ever see people are not uh, very uh, uh, forthcoming for fancy new technology this is the reason because they do not know how long it will take to recover if you talk about airlines people, airlines have fail safe built into them like what if the runway gets damaged due to accident or a plane crashing into it they have a backup runway if that fails they will have a second runway nearby that's why you always see like you know airplane uh, like airports are clumped together basically if you are going to london you will have like three to four london airports itself one would be core london then another will be secondary that's built for safety reasons also that if one fails you have plane to safely divert everywhere so how long does it take to recover due to earthquake or due to tsunami or things of that nature then does it have domino effect now this is very bad for uh, uh, let's say hyperloop will have worst case domino effect now what does this domino effect mean it's like if you have failure in one part of the line would it cascade to another part basically you have railway long range railway is very vulnerable to this because these tracks run for like hundreds to thousands of kilometer you could have a scenario where you have one small break but this whole line have to be taken out of commission why because they didn't had a parallel line going from it or you know it's 
if you have long strain it can be cut anywhere so that becomes a very serious domino effect where minor damage on one place can simply means your whole railway line is uh, you know off service so what kind of domino effect it can have and uh, what are the recovery procedures then this is the very crucial part for you and i it's like what about price fluctuations like as you can see the oil and energy prices are going up i, I just don't only mean about like oils in like jet fuel uh, in terms of your electricity that's also getting more expensive per unit wise so how are you going to handle the price fluctuation because if it goes too expensive people are not going to use it so and uh, your revenue will go down that will cause a catastrophic failure so how can you handle price fluctuation? So all this consideration goes into making a decision what you're gonna buy. Because I, as you have seen my videos, I have already made videos on everything from monorail, monorail to maglev to hyperloop to a normal metro system to trolley bus system. If you ever wanted to know why like people choose uh, which kind of transport system, this was the reason. Like there are many things in play. This I have just given you a surface level detail to help you understand like why your country may be like, you know, uh, very, open with uh, let's say metro but not open with maglev or things of this nature there are many many more things that i wish to talk about this but this video will become like freaking 10 hour long so let's call it a day and this was my presentation on how we choose and uh, what things we have to consider for our transportation system i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't don't worry about it you can dislike it i would urge you to press dislike button twice and please comment as i reply to all of them and uh, subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching